Hey, welcome back to Drowning in Yarn. I'm Caleb. Today, I wanted to talk to you about the goals that I set for myself, specifically one goal for this year, which is to buy yarn more intentionally, because historically, I've been super impulsive with my yarn purchases. So I wanted to talk to you about what I plan to do to make this goal happen, because I think a lot of y'all probably have the same plan to not buy yarn whenever you feel like it, but to be more mindful about how you spend your money on your hobby. So before we get started, I'm gonna remind you, like always, to like this video if you're enjoying it or you're getting some value out of it. And definitely, if you wanna share your goal and how you plan to achieve it, leave a comment down below. So with this plan, I just want to take a step back, examine what I have, what I want to do, and kind of marry those two things so that it's easier when I do see yarn that I love to justify that purchase and make sure that that purchase is gonna work for me and not just be more consumption. And this plan to kind of more intentionally spend my money on my yarn started last year. I started thinking about it as a goal, but this year I decided to put that plan into action, which requires me to think about how I'm going to achieve it. So the first step is to keep track of the yarn that I have. In order to do that, I'm gonna take advantage of the stash feature in Ravelry. My thought process with this is, if I know what I have, I'm better able and better equipped to know what I need to buy or what I should be buying if I want to make those impulse purchases. And whenever it is time to go shopping, the best place to do that is to start from within my own stash. My stash, because I do live in a smaller place, it's kind of hidden all over the place. I have bins here or boxes there. It's hard to go through it all at once. So I decided the easiest thing to do would be to centralize my stash. I don't have the physical space to do that, so I'm going to methodically go through my stash and enter it all into my Ravelry stash so that I can search it, I can see it in relation to patterns, and see it all together whenever it's time to start planning for a project. I think having it all in one central place that's kind of connected to my queue of projects in Ravelry and connected to the database of patterns that I search whenever I'm looking for projects, which is Ravelry, will reduce the friction of using that stash. I tend to think that when there's more friction in a process, it's, it's easier to make that excuse to not do it. If I have to search in 17 different places to find a skein of sock yarn, it's gonna be easier for me to go and purchase a new one whenever I don't really need that. And that money would be best spent on nicer yarn next time versus is just spending all my money on bits and pieces everywhere and then I don't have that cash whenever it comes time to make a bigger yarn purchase. I also think that the act of actually going through all the yarn that I have and entering it into Ravelry is worth it to refresh my memory on what I do have so that going into this year starting this goal I have a complete picture of what my stash looks like and how that relates to the stuff at least in the near future that I want to make. So finally I think that the act of going through my stash will expose the holes in my stash. For instance, I love fingering weight yarn because I find it to be really versatile. I can make socks or I can hold it double for a DK weight and make a hat or whatever. But the problem is that I don't have many true DK weight yarns. I don't have many worsted weight yarns or bulky weight yarns because I tend to gravitate towards those fingering weight yarns. So whenever I do see a project that would work best with like, I don't know, a really wooly bulky yarn, I have one choice in my stash. So going through my stash, knowing what I already have will help inform those impulse purchases later. I feel like I'll just be better equipped to resist that urge to just buy, buy, buy fingering weight and look at other types of yarn and know that if I do impulse buy those things, it's a better use of my money than just contributing to my already massive stash of sock yarn. So like I said, I am gonna use the stash feature on Ravelry to do this. I am going to enter my full skeins, and for now, I'm not worrying about all my scraps. In the future, I'll make sure to update my stash as I use my yarn, but I don't wanna make this process of entering it into my stash any more stressful than it already needs to be. So the second part of my plan is to actually plan. I'm gonna go ahead and use Ravelry to do this, and I'm gonna use the queue feature because it can tie into the stash that I'm gonna spend all that time entering. So for me, it's really important not to think too far ahead because I start to get stressed out. This has happened before because I kind of use my queue and Ravelry as like this dumping ground for everything I think I'm 
ever going to make. And I feel like that's what favorites are for. Things that I think are nice and at some point might want to make. But my queue needs to represent only those things that I want to make in the near future. To make this work for me, I need to make sure that my queue represents what's actually in my mind as the things I want to make. So if I change my mind, then it needs to be deleted out of my queue. If I decide that that sweater I was going to make four projects from now is now my next project because I just got really excited about it, then that needs to move up in my queue. I'm not really great about planning, so I think if I keep my queue to about five items, then that process will be easier. Keeping up with the queue will be easier and it won't stress me out, it will help me actually plan. I think if I do these things, it will help me to buy yarn more intentionally and use the yarn I already have as well. Now, for this to actually work for me, I need to make room for impulse cast-ons, which for me tend to be things like hats or socks, usually small projects. So I wanna use the queue for my main projects that require planning and things that I'm going to fully cast on for my stash, socks, mittens, whatever. I need to leave room to actually just do that. My queue isn't the end all be all. It's more for those projects that require planning, which kind of leads into point three, which is more about purchasing than planning, but I need to be realistic. I need to leave room for impulse purchases. I'm never gonna not impulse purchase. I'm that person that at the cash register suddenly wants candy or like an Archie comic, and I'm the same way with yarn. When I see beautiful yarn, I want it. And so in order to make that happen without my stash growing out of control or becoming stressed out by it or how much I'm spending, I'm gonna build into my budget a certain amount of money that I am allowed to spend guilt-free on yarn so that whenever I do buy yarn I don't need, I'm not spending money that I've already earmarked for something else because I do tend to do that. And I think by planning my upcoming projects and by entering all my stash into Ravelry, whenever I do spend that impulse money that I've given myself permission to spend, I think it will make it easier to spend that money on things that fill in those gaps that I talked about in my stash to allow me to make more projects without having to go out every time and invariably buy more than I need because because every time I have to go shop for yarn, there's more of a chance I'm gonna buy more yarn than I need. This plan is flawed, but it's a start, it's a plan. And for me, that's better than just saying I'm gonna spend less because I kind of said that last year and it did not happen because I had no way to make it happen. Just saying you wanna do something isn't enough, not for me. So if you've thought about a plan like this or you have some other goal that you think people might be interested in, let us know down below. Also, if you enjoyed this video while you were watching it or you got some value out of it, hit that like button. And if you haven't already, I would love for you to hit that little subscribe button down below. I talk about all things yarn related and I would love if you join me in the future. So hit the little notification bell as well to get notifications when I post new content. Thanks for helping me kind of walk through my plan here and leaving tips down below. I'm going to go and start cataloging more of my stash because it's quite a project. So until next time, enjoy your knitting. I'll see you later.